welcome back and this is what you were getting ready for to call in with your questions and your comments the number to call is 0808-054-2233 again that's 0808-054-2233 the topic dyslexia now we spoke about dyslexia um, not taking not prescribing medication during yep. pregnancy what about when the dyslexia has been discovered is there any medication that can help the person no again i wouldn't speak medically i mean about medication because i'm not a, a trained specialist in that i'm trained as a brain trainer and a dyslexia trainer i provide remediation but okay. in all my experience there's been only where one condition where we actually brought in a neuropsychiatrist to look at a, a person who was in our center because we noticed that the person had attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Okay, yes, you did say yeah. that sometimes dyslexia comes with other things. Yes. Cognitive problems. Cognitive problems. Even this attention, attention deficit, deficit disorder. Deficit disorder. Uh, Does it come with other things as well? Is it a normal thing for dyslexia to come with comorbidities? Yes, it does happen that dyslexia does not stand on its own. It has to come with something. It comes with either dysgraphia, which is an inability to write. To write. So when people are unable to read, they also sometimes have bad writings. And uh, does it come with difficulty with numbers as well? Yes, that's dyscalculia. Uh, dyscalculia, rather. Yes, inability to calculate. Now, don't forget that dyslexia is such a, uh, a disorder that makes people even unable to know what weights and measures are. They, they hardly tell the time properly. They can't tell the time. They can't tell depth and heights. Which let's take this call. Let me hold you there for a minute. Sorry. Right. And let's take this call. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We can hear you. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ada. What's your question? Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon. Um, I have a younger brother. Yes, we can hear you. Who has dyslexia? He's in primary four. He's in primary five. And he's 14 years old. And he's 14 years old. And he has been having difficulties reading. We want to know what can we do to make it better for him. Thank you very much, Ada. I will direct your question to Mr. Eripo. Now, um, 14 years old, can he be helped? Absolutely. Don't forget I said my son... I discovered my son was dyslexic at nine. As we speak, he's 13. He's done two years of dyslexia work, brain training and dyslexia work, and he's absolutely okay now. So it can be helped. The point with cognitive skills, and I say this with emphasis, is that neuroplasmicity tells us, neuroplasmicity is science of the brain, tells us that the brain can be rewired at any time. And so Dyslexic people with intervention, with proper intervention, they are able to read, they are able to write. But you just need to take them for this assessment and then to have the support that they have, they need. One of the things we're struggling with now is that the educational system does not make provision for them. So it's quite challenging then you have the child at, at age 14, he's still in primary school. And so the school would not understand how to deal with this perhaps. So again, you need to have an assessment, a proper assessment of his condition and be able to then find a therapy for him, which can be found in most of the uh, centers that we have across the country. Now, do these children need special centers, special, uh, how do I put it, special training, teaching, or can they be allowed to go along with their classmates? Is it possible? There are two things in, to respond to that. First, teachers and parents don't understand why they are the way they are. So it is quite difficult, for which reason the foundation is going to be holding uh, teacher training during the vacation. All right. So the teachers don't understand how they are and how to support them, then they put them in mainstream. And of course, the educational system is not geared towards... But if it was geared, would yeah. that be okay? It would be okay as long as there's accommodation. You accommodate them. You take them on special... There's a special way of training them. They don't work by letters and by... Do that. You don't How work do by they sound. work? They work by sound and pictures. Most of our educational system hardly works with pictures. They hardly work at their pace. They are slow learners, no doubt. So they need to, the teacher needs to spend more time with the person. But our normal class sessions are 45 minutes. He's got 25 students with him, whom he has to carry along to a particular objective for the day. 
they will so not are be you able saying to learn. They have to have smaller classes. Smaller classes, better intervention, teaching aids that are pictorial in nature. You know, you want to teach about the brain, you don't talk about the brain in abstract, you bring something that recognizes the brain and then begin to talk about the parts of the brain in very simple and natural terms. Let's quickly take this call. Hello. Hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. Tony obviously can't hear. Okay. So let's continue with the interventions. Yeah. Do, so you said they are slower learners. Yeah. That means that they are going to take a lot longer to learn the same things as their classmates. Even to write. When my son was having this, con when he was struggling with this, this, this order, they would write in his exam paper, given extra 30 minutes, because he's slower. In normal class uh, activity, when they're uh, copying from the board, even copying notes from the board, they he would take more time. And of course, when the next teacher is in the class, what do they do? They wipe off that and start another. So he never gets his note completed in the first instance. Because and his this can go on until a child is 14. Not just 14 until they grow and finish university. We're dealing with adults who have graduated from university. Two weeks ago, I was dealing with an adult, an architect, qualified architect from one of the universities. But he, saw, he realized he's dyslexic. And his friend who went abroad... He's a Nigerian. He's a Nigerian. He realized he's dyslexic. Now we in. are coming to that. <laughs> Let's take this call. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Is it still Tony? Hello, Tony? Hello? Yeah. Yes, Tony. We Hello? can hear you. We can hear you, Tony. Yeah, good morning. G good morning, Tony. I want to ask uh, what of an adult that uh, uh, is always uh, making mistakes when he's... Uh, uh, Speaking, you know, addressing audience. I didn't quite get that. He's friend, always yeah. doing what? Somebody making mistake when he's addressing audience, you know, forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, that's a different condition. That's a different brain condition. That's he has low working memory or what we call short term memory or poor long term memory. But that particular. Does this is, happen in dyslexia too? Exactly. Part of it, the reason dyslexics can't not will not remember that they've met a word like the and you've had them pronounce it as the and they see the same word and they forget that the same word because they have long short-term memory okay it's a memory issue that's cognition that's why you can't train dyslexics without doing their cognitive enhancements you must balance the training of their con cognitive skills before you then do the reading okay but tony is talking about an adult yes. now who yeah. is making these mistakes while he speaks, yeah. what should be the step for him? The first step for him is to do exercises that increases his short-term memory. His short-term memory is very poor, is very low, maybe. And then he needs to do exercises to increase it. For instance, his short-term memory may not be able to be holding information for more than his five seconds or 10 seconds. He needs to increase it to one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And he could do that through various brain exercises. Okay, we have another call on the line. Hello, yeah. Benjamin. Hello. Hello, Benjamin. What's your question? Good afternoon, Mother. Good afternoon, Benjamin. I'm calling. I have a, a cousin. Just turn the volume of your TV set down a bit. The volume of your TV set down a bit. Okay. okay. I have turned it down. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Uh, he like whenever he saw the book, he would like to read the book. And when you read it, he may forget what you have read. Sorry, Benjamin, you need to turn your, your volume down fully because it's echoing here. Hello, madam, you are hearing me? Okay, this is a lot better. Hello, you are hearing me? Yes, go ahead. So, when you read a book, he, he likes reading books, but whenever he reads a book, he forgets what he reads. And he, 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 whenever he saw a book, he would like to read it. And it's easily to forget what he has read. That is the problem we are facing. Okay, thank you very much, Benjamin. Yeah. This seems to be a really wide thing. Yeah. So what's this all about? Two things. One is, does he understand what he has read? And does he remember what he has read? Now, you can help him remember what he has read. If immediately he finished reading, you should ask him to tell you the story of what he has read. That's comprehension. All dyslexic struggle with comprehension. That is, something is read yeah. and they don't understand they it. They don't understand it. They don't understand it. So you're asking him to remember what he has said, which he doesn't understand. Can all these problems be addressed? Of course. That's what the, the, what, that's what the dyslexia training is about. Dyslexia training is nothing other than 
training the person, and I say person consciously, adults and children, mm -hmm. to be able to read, to be able to write, to be able to comprehend, to be able to spell, and to be able to transfer their thoughts into writing. Okay, at the end of a series of these kind of trainings, do we get somebody who can compare to his uh, normal yeah. or other classmates, somebody who is not dyslexic, can he favorably compare? He can compete favorably after he's gone through these interventions. Permit me to ask, your son, he's now 13. Yes. How is he doing in school? Um, I'm glad to the glory of God to say, as we say in Nigeria, to the glory of God, in December he won a prize in his JS class as the most improved student of the year. And in February this year, he won the prize for reading a 500-page book with the best summary. Same, normal, everyday school. Everyday school. No, Thank you very that's, that's much, Mr. Ariko, for class. coming on thank the you. program. We are closing now. Oh, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. Thank you, viewers, for being there for us, allowing us to enter your homes. Thank you, Ben, Tony, and Ada for your calls. We'll see you next week.